where do you feel like you are at this point in your life? What's well, a word that you could describe it? A daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Big daddy. <laughs> WBLS, and you are officially plugged in. We are live here at S5 Studios with the one and only legendary singer-songwriter, my man Robin Thicke. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Looking Thanks, amazing. Lord. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for stopping through. My pleasure. It's so great to see you, Just Nick. It's good to see you too. Looking all snazzy. You know, I try to New York City. You know, we gotta <laughs> we gotta get dressed up for New York City. You stay in the gym a lot? Are you like a, a workout? No, no. Actually, I'm more of an athletic. I just um, I love to play sports. So now tennis is my new. I, used to, I played basketball my whole life, but then after knee surgery, I can't really run up and down the court with them young bucks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so now I find you have myself. to do a lot of running with tennis too. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it, it's a, a little small. Smaller and you know it's a little easier on the on the knees tennis. Yeah, well, but that's how I stay in shape for the most part. You look great. Thank you. And you've been busy. Yes. You've been busy, but we're we're finally getting some music from you because yes. we've been wanting it and anticipating it. But I'm not gonna lie, I've been enjoying watching you on The Mass Singer. Thank you. Thank you. you I know, love that show. I could tell like that's you're so funny. <laughs> oh, thank like you. your sense of humor is hilarious. <laughs> thank you. Well, you know that comes from uh, Pops. You know, my dad was a comedy writer and a, a stand-up comedian and a, a man of a, a legend. A man of all traits. So yeah, so when I'm doing The Mass Singer, I just kind of kick into Alan Thick mode. <laughs> I love it. And your impersonation of him is just spot on too. Yes, just Nick. <laughs> Happy to be here. WBLS. Love it. So what's one of your favorite moments on the show? Oh, um, you know, I think the uh, it was the end of the first season and when uh, we found out that it was T-Pain <laughs> was the winner <laughs> and none of us guessed T-Pain, none of us knew that it was him and obviously we, we all know his records, we all know him very well. Um, but the fact that none of us got it right and the fact that T-Pain won the first season, I thought gave the show so much street cred, you For know what sure. I mean? And, uh, and I remember getting home from the finale that night and my father had uh, passed away uh, a couple years before that. And uh, I remember thinking to myself when I got home, you know, this could be a big hit. And my dad would have loved this show. Like, my dad loved big tent television and all that kind of stuff. So I remember getting home and kind of just shedding a little tear going, I know my dad would have loved this show and would be ha happy to watch every episode with his son on it. <laughs> Absolutely. Your dad was loved by everyone. Yeah, he was a man. We missed sure. him terribly. Is there an artist who performed on the show that you were, like, totally surprised that they could sing? Um... Not, well, you know, most of the, the real singers, those are the ones that I usually guess. I, I usually don't guess. Yeah, um, you've been spot on. Yeah, I, I usually don't get the, the, uh, the non-singers as well because I, I don't know their uh, stories or their, their voices as well. So I'm sure that while you were on the show, a lot of people were just kind of like, well, when are you going to put out new music? Yeah. It's been three years. It has. But, you know, I have four kids now and I'm, I'm in dad Beautiful mode. Beautiful kids. And, and, you know, I just don't have to rush the music. I want to make sure that it's, it's right and it feels good. And I like to have a, a, a full album before I release a single. I didn't want to just release a single and then not have an album to back it up. So oh. luckily now I've got, I'm almost uh, done with the new album. It's going to come out around Valentine's Day. So we've got, you know, six months to set it up and release a couple singles. But I'm really excited about the new music. I've been putting my, my heart into it and I, I'm, I'm, I feel good about it. Yeah, well, we're loving the new single, I Know Thank What you. To Do With I All That. I Know What that. To Do With I All mean, That. I mean, it's very catchy, <laughs> so what you trying to let us know? Because well, you know, four just kids, you clearly know what to do Yes, with well, all it, that. you know, it's when you, uh, when you meet a woman who is everything, and yeah. she's all that, and, uh, and I know what to do with all that. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I said, I never send Jay-Z uh, um, records very rarely, but I had a feeling about this one, and I sent it to him, and I was like, is this what I think it is? And he texted me back, he was like, it is what you think it is, and he sent me a video concept idea. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so I was like, because that's why, that's when I, I needed that kind of co-sign. I was like, is this, is, is this kind of record I think it is? And Jay was like, yeah, that's, that's the one. So we're very excited to, to be putting it out. Uh, and it drops August 23rd is the new single, is the release date. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. We're looking forward to it. So um, you have a beautiful family, by the way. Thank you. 
And I know that, um, is it Julian? Julian. Oh my goodness, his voice is amazing. Oh, he's my, you know, that's my boy. He, he's just, he's a great student. He's a great big brother. He's a great son. He's a, he's a Buddhist. <laughs> he's a practicing Buddhist. Oh, wow. Literally. How old he, is he? 14. Wow. He, uh, even go, he goes to the Buddhist center and he gives speeches on how Buddhism has helped, uh, you know, um, has helped him with his uh, stress and anxiety as a young teen. And he's just a really uh, an impressive young man. That's amazing. And he can sing. He I'm can pretty sing. sure you're like surprised to see how he's maturing. That's a mature thing. To it do. is. It is. And you know, it's funny because I, I was wanting him to do more writing, and he wasn't doing as much writing. And then recently, he's he listens to SZA like you know all day long. It's his favorite artist and mine too. So. Um, and recently he started getting his pen going and the, the kids got lyrics, you know, and, and he wrote one recently. It was funny because I went to him and I was like, yo, this new song you just wrote is amazing. Can I sing? Can, do you mind if I do a version of it? He was like, but that's my song. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you have to run me my even, money, yeah, Dad. <laughs> he didn't even want me to, to do a version. So I was like, okay, okay, it's, it's your time now. I get it. But, uh, you know, he just, he's got a great head on his shoulders, and he's really uh, trying to, to be a great lyricist, which is, uh, which is important. That's amazing. Yeah. Maybe you guys can do, like, a, a song. Well, no, we're definitely going to do stuff together, because he just after he wrote that song and he saw how excited I got and that I wanted to sing it, now he's written four new songs since then. For so sure. He's on the move. I think he's trying to, like, do a Billie Eilish and have an album out by the time he's 16. I love it. He could totally do it. I think I remember watching something on Instagram. Yeah. If it was a play or something he was involved in, yeah. I was like, yo, these runs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he jazzed it up for I certain. I, I was don't like, know where he gets it from. No, oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we come from a family of musicians. My uh, great-grandfather was a jazz trumpet player. My grandfather was a jazz trumpet wow. player. My mom is a singer, you know, and had um, a number one song with R&B singer Carl Anderson. Oh, and wow. my dad uh, wrote theme songs and sang the Different Strokes theme song, and my mom sang Facts of Life theme song. So, uh, so yeah, so we come from a, a lot of music in the family. Oh, yeah. That's money, baby. That's money. <laughs> now, you mentioned SZA. Would you do a record with her? Absolutely. At any day, any time. SZA, can we make but that that's happen? That's my girl. I love SZA. I mean... The album's coming out soon. Maybe we could do a remix or something like that. She has a new album coming out? Your oh, album is oh, coming mine. out. Oh, mine. Yeah, mine is... Uh, yeah. So that's that's what I like to do is, is I get all the songs together and now I'm going to start reaching out to uh, some friends for little guest remixes and stuff like that. So hopefully we can get SZA on there. Fingers crossed. Come on, SZA. Make it happen. <laughs> Come on, baby. Make it happen. Make it happen. So tell me about this album and what's the difference between where you are right now and then your first album that you put out? Well, my first album was... Um, very uh, experimental, you know, and I really wanted to make an album that sounded like nothing that ever existed before. And uh, at this point in my life, I really want to connect, uh, reconnect with the fans and reconnect with the, uh, the audience, where the last two albums that I made were very personal um, art pieces. Uh, the Paula album and then On Earth and in Heaven was a uh, tribute to my father, father yeah. and Andre Harrell, uh, my mentor from Uptown Records. and taught me everything I know. So those were more personal art pieces where this album I'm really uh, trying to make records to get out there and reconnect and, and make music for the people as opposed to just myself. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So where do you feel like you are at this point in your life? What's well, a word that you could describe it? A daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Big daddy. <laughs> uh, you know, my kids come first. I love, uh, after my father passed, you know, I had three more kids trying to fill that void that mm. I lost with my dad and that I'm missing with my father. And I love being a dad. I love getting up and taking him to school. I love putting him to bed at night. And, uh, the, and luckily with the mass Singer, you know, um, I, I get to, you know, pay the bills with that and then take my time with my music. So I used to always be in a, in a rush and working every day trying to make music. Nowadays, it's a little more balanced, you know, because you got to realize if you have five people in the house that need your love and attention and time and, and all that, you know, that means that you, they only get 20 percent each. <clears throat> then that's and I haven't even started working yet. So right. you have to really know how to manage your time when you have a big family. And uh, so that's what I, I work on now is just making sure everybody's getting what they need and the music's getting what it needs also. That part. And yeah. you're touring right now with Boys the Men. So yeah, how yeah. is the balance Man, with that's, that? It's so cool. Like, you know, that's one of the great things about this business is you get to work with the people that you, you idolize. Like, I remember learning every riff to Come End on. of the Road and Wanye. I'll Make Love to You, that Wanye. That starts shaking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know how he'd be doing it. And and all the harmonies they did. And, and so uh, so now to be on tour with them, it's just kind of full circle. It's pretty cool. Like, Jodeci was my, was my shit, too. You I know, could KC. tell. KC, I, I learned it. 
all of them KC runs, and KC and I text each other now just randomly, you know. And uh, that's that's the beauty of, uh, of of what we do. So was you in like the mirror doing your little grind with oh, Jodeci? Oh, oh no, you, I was. Gotta... Playing, do you remember the jukebox back in the day? Yes. That you could order videos in the jukebox. If I had a girl come over, I would put. Uh, Forever My Lady on the TV and literally stand in front and sing to a woman. Absolutely. I've been doing the moves. I was like a Magic Mike or something back then. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. So um, how has the love been while you've been on tour? Oh, it's, you know, um, it's all love. I mean, especially because Boys to Men being such an established, you know, um, superstar group. Um, and for me... You know, the, I just love being on the road. I used to worry about if I hit a bad note when I was on stage or if I made a little mistake, it would stick with me. But now, the only place I don't have any problems is when I'm on stage. <laughs> well, that's because you can sing and the mic is on and we can hear you Yeah, and so good. when I walk on stage, I leave all my problems off the stage and then I pick them back up when I get off stage. I absolutely <laughs> but, love But when that. I'm on stage, it's, it's the release. It's the And, like I said, I'm daddy all the time, so that's when I get to be Robin Thicke. Yes. You know what I mean? I get to feel, like, fabulous and, <laughs> and swagged out and then I get home and I'm picking stuff up off the floor. You know? So is it <laughs> is it like night and day, like what dad looks at versus Robin? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, dad's in sweats and he probably has food on his shoulder. Does dad <laughs> grow the hair out? No, no, dad's not. I, we, like, I tried to grow the hair out and I was joking. I started to look like a bad Harry Potter teacher or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Professor, it just the hair got in between. It wasn't quite right. And uh, so, no, I think I'm going to stick with this, with my old school look for a little while. Yeah. Well, it looks vintage, good on vintage you. Vintage Robin Thicke. <laughs> I, I'm trying to imagine you with long hair now. Yeah. It would definitely be cute if you pull it in like a ponytail or something. Maybe. A little, Maybe. little man bun. Yeah. <laughs> Wifey might not like that. Does she like the long or the no, short? No, well, she liked it. It actually got to a point because I was growing it out, but it got into this middle range that just was not, it was looking like a bob or something. I don't know what was going on. And so Wifey was like, you think you want to cut your hair? And I was like, yeah, I think it's time. It's time. Oh, yeah. That's her saying. She prefers yeah, it short. Yeah, you think you want to cut it out? <laughs> so um, you're... Like I said, you're very funny. You. Do you think that you would do like acting like your dad? And well, I would love to do more. I mean, The Real Husbands of For Hollywood, sure. you know, was one of my uh, favorite things that I've ever done, working with Kevin Hart and all the, and JB Smooth and all those guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, my I grew up in a, a comedy household. It was all who's got the funniest jokes at the dinner table, yes. who's got the best one-liners. My dad was, always had jokes in the holster ready to go. So uh, I would love to do more. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And hopefully, we're going to get together for another season of Real Husbands soon. I'm sure there's a lot of improv going on on the set with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, we look at the script and throw it out the window, especially when Kevin walks in. As soon as Kevin walks in, the script goes right it's out the window. Done. Yeah, he's just doing whatever is the funniest thing he can think of. Absolutely. And I learned a lot from working with him. And I've learned so much from working with uh, Dr. Ken, Ken Jong, yes. who I'm on The Masked Singer with. All of that chemistry that him and I have, I learned a lot from him, you know, comedic timing and uh, just how to... Uh, uh, how to surprise each other and go the opposite direction. When one person's going this way, you can cut and go the opposite direction to make it funny, you know? I love it. I love the swag you have, too. Thank you. Like, <laughs> I had no idea. Like, I knew you was cool, but this swag is just different. Well, my dad, you know, my dad was swagged out, and then Andre Harrell also. I think of somewhere in between Andre and my dad, the yeah. information, the New York City uh, swag that Andre, ghetto fabulous, that he taught me, you know, about the culture and everything I learned from him. And then my dad's just normal, walk into a room and make everybody uh, laugh and smile. He just had that gift. Absolutely. So tell me about the album, right? So uh, we did talk about just your thought process behind it. Do you feel like you want to keep making albums? Oh, yeah. I mean, music is my life. There's, I, I don't, I'm, I'll make music until you know, I'm, I'm in the grave. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and, you know, I love to sing. I love to perform. I love to write songs. And I love to tell my story. Um, all my albums are literally a diary of where I was at at that point in my life. You know? Yeah, yeah. What about a Las Vegas residency? Would love that. We're actually looking into that. That's why I'm doing, I have two weekends with Boys to Men coming up. Um, where I'm opening for them um, in Las Vegas, but we're, we're hopefully planning a residency for the new year um, around the new album and all that. Yeah. You have so much going on, but it's a good thing. Yeah, you know, it's a like thing. you're working yeah. and you're a songwriter. You've written for Usher, you've written for Brandy, one of my favorite singers. Yeah. So are you still writing for people now? You know, I don't write for people as much because I really just want um, 
to tell my story and, and sometimes my songs are too personal to relate to other people yeah. you know if I get very inspired by somebody like I remember I saw Jennifer Hudson sing at the uh, Met Ball years ago and I was so inspired in, in awe of her voice in person that I reached out I wrote a song for her and sent it and reached out to, to them oh, wow. and it ended up on her Grammy Award winning debut album Congratulations! Yeah. but these days it's really just about um, like I said managing my time um, and I just really want to make my own music and focus on that. Once I started becoming an artist, I really stopped writing for other people for the most part, except for a one-off for Mary J or Jennifer right. Hudson or Usher, you know, my favorite, or Lil Wayne, something like that, you know. Is there another genre you would want to write for? Or have you written for them all? I don't, yeah, I don't really think of it like that. I, I when I sit down at the piano, I, I, I try to write what I'm going through right yeah. at that moment, right at that second, what I'm feeling and what's troubling me or what's inspiring me, and, and I just, I just tell my story and you know hope that it connects with. with Cause you know people. country is a thing now. Oh, I, I don't. I don't think I'll be doing that. No, <laughs> You're good, no, no, like no. You. I'm good on that. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with thank us. You, we that. are looking forward to the new single. Yes, I know what. I know what to do with all that. Woo! Listen, come on, the vocals is just vocally. Well, okay? yeah, we, we partied a little bit last night. We finished filming the video yesterday, so me and wifey went out and had a little fun celebrating last night. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for stopping through. And WBLS has always been a home for me, like, you know, from the very beginning. Uh, so much support and so much love, so I always have to come by and, and visit and say thank you to all the WBLS staff and, and fan base and everybody. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you. You know, we're celebrating 50 years of being on the air Amazing. this year. Amazing. And artists like you have gotten us to where we are today. So thank you for your contribution. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. It's WBLS. Woo!